Patrick went to serve in the army under contract right after high school. He went through hell. He saw death and pain, maimed young bodies, but fate was merciful to him, and Patrick returned to his native village unharmed. And what followed was a peaceful, civilian life. There was no sense in staying in the village. The local agricultural company was falling apart before his eyes. His parents advised Patrick to go to the city, so he left. In the city, life was difficult at first. There was barely enough money from odd part-time jobs to live on. Then, Patrick got a job as a truck driver and started making good money. Some of the money he sent to his parents, and the rest he spent as he saw fit. Sometime later, Nancy came into his life. The woman was a salesperson in a store when Patrick had gone to buy a jacket. They exchanged phones, began dating, and sometime later married. Nancy had a son, Tom, who was four years old, and Patrick accepted him as his own. Time passed. Over time, the couple bought a spacious apartment in a good neighborhood, made a good repair, and started to live even better. They lacked one thing. Mutual children. Nancy understood this and tried to get pregnant, but nothing worked. Going to doctors did not bring any result, and in the end, Patrick accepted his fate. He did not think about divorce and was happy to have Tom and Nancy. But soon, his quiet life was over. Patrick began to suspect that Nancy was cheating on him. So far, it was only a suspicion. One day, Patrick returned from another business trip, and entering into the bedroom, he was shocked at what he saw. Nancy was half-naked and asleep in bed with an empty champagne bottle and two glasses on the bedside table. Patrick woke the sleeping wife and asked, What happened here? Who is he? Nancy sobered up instantly. Nothing happened, I was just sleeping. And what's this? Patrick pointed to the nightstand. It was obvious that Nancy was nervous, but she answered quickly. You mean the champagne? Oh, Rilla dropped by. We haven't seen each other for such a long time, so we had a little drink with her. Why? Is that not allowed? Who's Rilla? said Patrick. Where's the lipstick? There's no lipstick on the glass. Obviously a man had been drinking from it. And why did you take your friend into the bedroom instead of the living room or kitchen? You're lying to me. I'm not lying, Patrick, Nancy justified herself. It just happened. I didn't invite her into the kitchen. It was messy. I didn't have time to wash the plates. I had to invite Rilla into the room. Otherwise, she'd think I'm a bad housewife. Besides, I was showing her my new clothes I bought yesterday. And why are you not at work? Asked Patrick, visibly calming down. They gave me the day off. I got overtime for last month. They don't give a bonus, but a day off is okay, replied Nancy, looking at her husband with wide, open, honest eyes. Well, look, Nancy, if I find out you're cheating on me, I won't forgive you. They never came back to this conversation, but Patrick did not trust Nancy as before. That ill-fated morning, Patrick was on his way to work. An SUV crashed into his car at a crossroads at breakneck speed. Patrick was in a coma for two days, but he survived. The consequences of the accident were devastating. Doctors said Patrick would never walk again because it was impossible to restore the spine to its former state. Then there were months of rehabilitation and a returning to home. Nancy and Tom usually left in the morning for work and school and returned in the evening. On weekends, they did not pamper Patrick with their company either. A shopping mall or a water park was more interesting to them than a half-paralyzed husband and stepfather, so Patrick spent almost all his time alone in the apartment. But even that kind of family life soon ended. Nancy 
began a difficult conversation without any preamble. I'm sorry, Patrick, but I need a divorce. I can't go on like this. And I've been asked to marry. So it wasn't Rilla who came to visit you, then after all, asked Patrick. No, not Rilla, but my first love from school. Don't think I'm asking for a divorce because of your disease. No, it's just that I still love him. He's divorced now, and he asked me to be together with him. I gave my consent. Then what else is there to talk about? You've already made up your mind. Let's divorce, replied Patrick. I'll go to my parents. There's nothing more for me to do in the city. And the apartment? asked Nancy. What about it? Shall we sell it and share the money? As you like. I don't care. But it's better not to sell it. Keep it for Tom in the future. After the divorce, Patrick's cousin came by car and took him to his native village. Patrick now lived in his ancestral home with his mother. His father had died three years before. Patrick's mother was glad to see her son back. Although she grieved over his unhappy fate, her soul was at peace. Now her son was under her care. May, a nurse, was a frequent visitor to their house. She checked on Patrick's health, gave him pain-killing injections when necessary, kept his spirits up, and prevented him from falling down and starting to drink. Patrick liked her more and more every day. One day he asked his mother where she was from, how long she'd been working, whether she had a family, the elderly woman told everything she knew about the nurse. Do you like her son? She's not married, by the way, and she doesn't have children. Apparently, as a young girl, she was in no hurry to get married, and now there are no single peers left. She doesn't want to marry unworthy men, so she lives alone. If you were healthy, I'd ask you to court her. I like her. She's a good woman and is warm-hearted. Patrick sighed, perfectly aware that he could not be a good match for any woman now. After getting used to village life a little, Patrick brought the internet into the house and bought a laptop. Now he could listen to music, watch movies and chat online. He was in social networks that Patrick found many of his comrades in arms. Once he received a letter from his captain, Shane Tennant. Shane wrote that he had also resigned a long time ago and was now in business. He thanked Patrick once again for saving him from death 15 years ago. He did not leave him seriously wounded, but carried him out of the fire on his shoulders. And anyway, Patrick, why are you sitting there in your backwater? Come to me to the capital. We need reliable people like you here. Patrick thanked the former commander of the platoon for the invitation, but refused to visit, briefly writing in response. Sorry, commander, I am unable to come. Now, I'm like in a trench for the rest of my life. My legs can't walk at all. I move around in a wheelchair. And a week later, on Sunday, Patrick was shocked to see his commander on the doorstep of his house and he did not come alone, but with a doctor. After joyful greetings, the doctor examined Patrick. Well, would it be possible to help him? asked Shane impatiently. Will you put my comrade in arms on his feet? I think so, but that's all of course still my guess, based on the examination and the patient's medical history. That same day, Shane took Patrick to the capital. The operation was a success. A few months later, Patrick began to learn to walk again, because in three years his legs had already forgotten how to walk. In six months, Patrick was already walking without crutches. And meanwhile, Nancy's life with her new husband was not all what she had imagined. He often went on drunken raves with friends and girlfriends parted for weeks and consequently did not go to work. 
Nancy was the only one who had a job, and she barely had enough money to pay for living. Eventually, she was fed up with such a life, and she and Tom returned to their apartment. The woman was now very grateful for her ex-husband's advice not to rush into selling their apartment. Left alone, Nancy often thought of Patrick. She regretted that she had divorced him. She understood that there had never been a better man for her than Patrick, and that he was the only one who had truly loved her. And one day, she took the courage to visit him, hoping that he would be glad to have her back. Who needs him but me and his mother, she thought on her way to her ex-husband's home village. Nancy stopped the car near the grocery store and decided to buy some presents for Patrick's mother and at the same time to stretch her legs, which were numb from sitting for so long. She went into the store and walked past the shelves for a long time, not knowing what to choose for her former mother-in-law. "'I'm sorry,' heard Nancy suddenly. "'Are you going to buy anything or not?' "'What's the matter?' When I choose, then I'll buy. Are you rushing? Yes, I'm closing the store early today, answered the saleswoman. There's a wedding in our village today, and the wedding ceremony is about to start. Our paramedic is getting married, and I'm already late because of you, and I'd like to see it. It's not every day we have weddings in our village. Ah, that's the thing, smiled Nancy. All right, then, give me that biscuit for tea. And, come on, I want to see the village wedding too. They left the store and hurried to the church. Patrick, handsome and slender, was just coming out of the building. The villagers clapped their hands and threw field flowers and candy at the newlyweds' feet. Nancy tore open the package on the roll and nervously began to eat the sweet confectionery. But it wasn't getting any sweeter. For her, she felt bitter. Her cheeks were wet of tears of annoyance and anger, and the fact that she was late. <laughs>